Welcome class sa first lesson natin sa Earth Science. Today we will talk about the characteristics of Earth that makes it habitable. In this lesson, we want to answer the question why our planet is habitable. Ano-ano yung mga characteristics na masasabi nating unique sa ating planeta for it to develop and sustain life. So let's go with the first reason kung bakit habitable yung planeta natin. First reason is location. Specifically, the, the location of our solar system sa Milky Way. So, the solar system is in a stable area where there is less stars. Less stars as compared to the Milky Way's center and the major arms. It gives a stable environment for life to develop. So we specifically, our solar system is located in here. This is what we called as the Orion Cygnus Arm. Anong importance ng location na to? Kasi sinasabi na dahil nandito tayo sa isang minor arm ng Milky Way Galaxy, mas less yung number of stars present in it. Kung less yung stars, ibig sabihin po, mas less yung interaction sa two or more different stars. Katulad ng nangyayari, maaaring nangyayari sa Scutum Centaurus arm or di naman kaya sa Perseus arm. These two are the two major arms of your Milky Way galaxy. So, sinasabi ng mga scientists na nagkakaroon lagi ng interaction between two different stars sa mga arms na to dahil nga mas magkakalapit sila. Maaaring merong gravitational tug naghihilahan ang dalawang stars o higit pa kung sino yung mas malaki, mas massive, technically siya yung mananalo. Then it will lead to collision. Mahaari magkaroon ng explosion. So just imagine if that will happen to our sun. So maaaring wala na tayong sun ngayon or the whole solar system, yung mga planets na nandito, wala na. Same thing will happen if we were located in here, sa galactic center. So, scientists believe na merong black hole, massive, or super massive black hole sa gitna ng ating Milky Way galaxy, sa galactic center. So, imagine lang natin, nasa loob ng black hole yung ating solar system, o uh, maaaring tulad nung kanina, gravitational tug, Nagihilahan yung dalawang source, collision, and then we will not exist. Another thing na ia-add natin sa location is the location of our Earth in the solar system. So, um, our planet is in the Goldilocks zone, an area with the right amount of temperature that makes water stay as liquid. Uh, so, sa picture na to, may kita natin yung green area na iniikutan ng planeta natin, which is the Earth. It is called as a habitable zone. Tawag din dyan is the Goldilocks zone. Katulad sa story ni Goldilocks, uh, gusto ni Goldilocks na just the right temperature nung kanyang forage. Same thing with our planet. It is in the right temperature to sustain liquid water. So, sabi, if we are nearer the sun, then it is too, uh, our planet will be too hot and will not be able to sustain liquid water because it will evaporate. Uh, kung tayo naman ay mas malayo sa ating location ngayon, then ang tendency ng water is for it to turn into solid, which is ice. Because scientists believe Water is the origin of life in any planet. This is the same reason why we are looking for a planet within a star's habitable zone. Of course, kinoconsider pa rin natin dito yung size ng star at yung size ng planeta for us to identify its habitable zone. So there is no a certain range or a constant range para i-identify natin yung habitable zone. We always want to consider the size of the star a planet is revolving. 
next reason for the existence of life in our planet is the sun. Of course, we all know na yung sun natin ang primary source of energy needed by the living things in our planet. But aside from that, yung characteristics mismo ng sun ang nagbigay ng chance for life to develop here in our planet. The sun's size and age makes it stable. The older the star, the larger it is. Larger stars and less massive stars are more unstable. The formation of the stars starts with a stellar nebula. Technically, this is a cloud of gas made up of the lightest element in our universe, which is hydrogen or helium. Now, uh, a star will be born if it is capable of transforming or converting hydrogen into helium in the process called as nuclear fusion. Now, kung gaano kadami yung hydrogen sa loob ng isang stellar nebula will identify kung ang star ba ay magiging average star or massive star. Sinasabi ng mga scientists na ang average star ay mas stable compared to massive star. Why? Massive stars uh, kasi tend to behave in a way na mas mabilis. Mas mabilis nilang kinoconsume yung hydrogen into helium than the stars or the average stars where our sun belong to. This is a diagram called as the hertzsprung russell diagram. The focus of this diagram is to compare the luminosity and temperature of different stars. Pero makikita rin natin dito na kinlasify yung sun natin as one part of the main sequence stars. This one, this group, technically. Yung buo na ito. Ano ang importansya ng pagiging main sequence star ng ating sun? Sinasabi na itong mga uri ng star na to ang pinaka-stable sa lahat ng uri ng stars. Bakit? Kasi 90% of its life will be dedicated in nuclear fusion of hydrogen into helium. Uh, dahil dito, we still have 8 billion years bago mag-evolve or bago mag-turn yung sun natin into a red giant. So kapag red giant na sinasabi na lalamunin na lahat ng planets or lahat ng objects na may kita sa solar system natin ng ating sun. Yung mga super giants naman, tulad ng sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, mas mabilis nitong na-use up yung hydrogen and it will turn into helium. Kapag ganito po yung nangyari, mas mabilis din po siyang mamamatay. Next reason is the Earth's core. We all know that the core is divided into two. You have the outer core and the inner core. The inner core is solid and the outer core is liquid. Yung pagiging liquid ng outer core na ito ang naging reason kaya nakabuo tayo or nakaroon ng planeta natin ng magnetosphere. As I have said earlier, magnetosphere is caused by the churning or the movement of the outer core present in our planet. Dahil sa formation ng magnetosphere na protektahan ang planeta natin against the harmful solar flares. So, it looks like this. Yung magnetosphere, para siyang barrier na pinoprotektahan yung planeta natin against harmful solar flare. Kung wala siya, yung single-celled organisms that is believed to be the origin of life will not develop into complex organisms. Or same thing will happen kung mawala yung magnetosphere. The organisms that we have now existing in our planet will die because of the solar flare or yung radiation na, na nagmumula mismo sa ating sun. Next reason is the moon. Bakit? The moon stabilizes the Earth's rotation and without it, Earth will wobble. And this wobbling will lead to shifting climates. Sinasabi na ganito ang magiging itsura ng rotation ng Earth sa kanyang axis kung mawawala ang ating moon. So, from time to time, maaari nandito siya sa axis na to or maaari nandito siya. So, there will be shifting of axis. 
and this shifting of axis will lead to drastic changes in the climate. Kapag drastic yung changes sa ating planeta, then technically, mahirapan mag-adapt yung mga organisms na nandito. So, the moon, as I have said, makes the uh, rotation of our planet stable. Next. Next one is the ozone layer. So, just like the magnetosphere, the ozone layer serves a shield for harmful organisms. Kung wala yung ozone layer natin, maaaring hindi na rin nag-develop yung mga organisms na nandito sa ating planeta. So, so, the ozone layer gives protection against harmful rays from the sun and the materials in it, the carbon dioxide, the oxygen, the nitrogen are essential for the development of life. So let's go with additional reasons why our planet is able to sustain life. First reason is the movement of Earth's plates. Sinasabi ng mga scientists that the movement of Earth's plates acted like a thermostat in our planet. Kinokontrol or tinutulungan nito yung ating planeta para ma-achieve yung right amount of temperature for the liquid water to stay that way. Next is the size of the Earth. Scientists believe if the Earth is too big or too massive as compared to its size today, maaaring hindi nito kinaya na masustain yung atmosphere na meron dito. Kapag masyadong malaki yung Earth daw natin, mas maraming gases na i-attract ng gravity na to. At kapag ganun ang nangyari, maaari maging poisonous yung gases sa atmosphere natin which is not applicable for the life in it. Kapag mas maliit naman yung planeta natin, mas mabilis makakascape yung atmosphere. Again, we will not have an atmosphere right enough for, for the life in our planet. And lastly, Earth's neighbor, specifically Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter is a gas giant. Dahil sa pagiging gas giant ng Jupiter, kinaya niya na iprotect yung planeta natin from asteroids and other planetary objects. Uh, nagkaroon ng asteroid belt dahil daw sa gravitational pull ng Jupiter. Kung mawawala daw yung Jupiter, maaaring ma-attract ng Earth's gravity yung mga asteroid na ito papunta sa ating planeta which again will destroy life that we know it. And that is the end of our lesson.